Today we're looking at slope, and we're going to be able to find the slope from a graph and find the formula for slope from, from just points. So Margot's grandparents are moving in with her family, and she's going to make a wheelchair ramp for them. Okay, you can see that it's this far off of the ground from, from one level to the next, and that far apart. Okay. She found another picture of her stairs, rise, of run, rise and run. So let's review with the background information that's given to solve the following. What do you think is meant by the terms rise and run in the context? Okay, so we're going to say the rise is the vertical change. So basically, how much does it go up and down? Okay. The run is going to be the horizontal change, which is left and right. Okay, let's look at this line in the graph below. We can see that the vertical change between two points is given by this. And the horizontal change is given here. Vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal. And so if we represent the vertical change as the change in y, okay, you see it is on the y-axis from this point on y to this point on y. And the horizontal change can be represented by a change in x. What's the vertical change between point A and B? Well, A is at negative 1, B is at 2, so that's 1, 2, 3. Okay, point A and B are 3 vertically apart. How about points A and C? Well, A and C are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 apart. And then point C and D, vertically they are three apart, one, two, three. Okay. Why can't I write? Sometimes I don't like using this website, especially on the laptop. Three apart. Where were we? So three for A and B, six for A and C, three for C and D. What is the horizontal just change? Well, horizontally, left and right, one, two, three, four. Between A and B is 4. Between A and C, okay, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then point C and D horizontally 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, the ratio of the vertical change to the horizontal change, okay, the change in y to the change in x, is determines the slope, okay, the slope of a line. You can have positive slope where it's increasing, and you can have negative slope where it's decreasing. But the, that's the change in up and down, over left and right. Vertical change over horizontal change change in y over the change in x. And we can just write change in as the Greek symbol delta. It just basically how much of a difference are there between those two points. And we take those two points and we can either count if we have a graph or subtract if we have just numbers.
So if we want to find this, the slope for the segment connecting A and B, okay, we have three and four, vertically three, horizontally four, so three over four is our slope for A and B. A and C, we have six going up and down over eight going left and right. Six over eight, which you'll notice reduces to three fourths. And then point C and D, it's three over four again. It changes by three going up and down, and it changes by four going left and right. What do you notice about the slope of the lines for A, B, and C? They end up being the same. They end up being the same. They're all points on the same line, and their slope is the same. What does your answer to item five indicate about the points on the line? All points have the same slope between them, is what I would say for number five. All points have the same slope between them. Slope is sometimes referred to as rise over run. This, that is a very important way to help remember it. Rise is your Y, Rud is your X. So let's explain how the ratio relates to the ratio of the find and the slope function above. Change in y over change in x, that's equal to rise over run. Would the slope change if you counted the run before you counted the rise? Not really, and as long as you don't put it into the equation like that. I mean, you can go, you can go look up your horizontal distances. It did look up your vertical distances, but it doesn't matter which order you look them up in, as long as you know that rise over run is the answer. So let's look at the slope of this graph. The first thing we need to do is find points that we can see. Okay, you see right here. I don't know where that is at. What point that is at? I know it's at one something, somewhere between negative two and negative three. But that doesn't help me. I need to find points on a graph that I can actually tell easily what they are. For example, right here, zero six. I can see that. Okay, we can go, go, go right about here, zero, negative four. And then we can go, that's not on the line, maybe, but let's make sure right about here, negative seven, negative six. So seven, zero, zero, negative four, negative seven, negative six. Now let's find the slope. So the change in y, let's see, right there, so that's one, two, three, a change in y of three. Over a change in x, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, three over seven. That'll be our slope. Let's see, we can see from here to here, seven. All of the slope of the line can be calculated by looking at the graph and counting the vertical and the horizontal change. It can also be calculated numerically, which basically means we need to add and sub or subtract numerically with numbers. Recall that this is the slope of the line is a ratio of change in y or change in x, which is you know del written as delta x and delta y. We need to identify two points and record the coordinates. For example, 
here was seven zero. Uh, here was zero, negative three. Which coordinates relate to the vertical change? The y coordinates. Which coordinates relate to the horizontal change? The x coordinates. Determine the vertical change. Well, or our two points that we used, we said there was 7, 0, and 0, negative 3. So if we want to determine the vertical change, we would say 0 minus negative 3, which equals 3. The horizontal change, 7 minus 0, which equals 7. And then calculate the slope, whether well, it's the vertical change, change in y over the horizontal change, change in x, which is 3 over 7. Okay, and so it's customary, traditional, to label the coordinates of the first point, x1 and y1, and the coordinates of the second point, x2, y2. It's just the way that we label them, the way that you can see them in your book and any other places that you may come across. Well, you'll know, all right, my first point and which one is my second point, which are my first Y's, which are my second Y's, X's, and so on. So if we want to write the expression to calculate the vertical change using this terminology, we'll just say Y1 minus y2. And we want to write expression to do the horizontal change. x1 minus x2. How much did they change? What's the difference? Subtract. And if we want to put that in together and use it as our slope, we'll say y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Okay, so this is going to be our new formula for slope. y1 over minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Vertical over horizontal. Rise over run. Remember, we're using m for slope. So let's try one out. Let's use that formula to determine the slope of a line that passes through the points 4, 9, minus and and negative 8, negative 6, so let's just do it. y1 minus y2, so our first y is 9, minus our second y, which is negative 6. Over, our first x is 4, minus our second x, which is negative 8. And so 9 minus negative 6, well, that's 9 plus 6, that's 15. 4 minus negative 8, well, that's 4 plus 8, that's 12. 15 twelfths. Or I could reduce that by 3 and say 5 fourths. Either way, that's fine. That is our slope. We go up 5 over 4. All right, so I think we're pretty much got slope. I mean... Finding the change in y and change in x on their practice problems, number 16. You don't even need to do slope. You just need to do the individual parts. Change in y, change in x. Connor determines this slope. Is you doing this, calculating it this way. April calculates it this way. One of them is right, one of them is wrong. Okay, Think about which one did it the proper way. y1 minus y2 or x1 over x1 minus x2. When you're finding the slope, you only need two, two points. So this could be a point, or this could be a point. That could be your two, or it could be one, this one and that one, or this one and that one. Okay, any two, you can find the slope. And then we need to be able to find slopes on a graph. Remember, find two points.
that we can tell what the points actually are and then find the slope there, rise over run.